let's get into Alberta stuff now that we're talking about this because <laughs> Alberta has become the uh, first major jurisdiction in this country. I think the first jurisdiction in this country to protect women's sports. Um, major announcement came yesterday, um, late in the day, although we knew it was coming early in the day. Uh, our Premier Daniel Smith, as promised and long overdue, a whole slate of uh, changes to the Public Health Act in Alberta and a number of others um, moving to not only ban men from competing against women in women's sports, but to protect those sporting organizations from federal government overreach if they are if the federal government tells them, uh, look, you are violating human rights by not letting men destroy the sporting careers of women. So that's great. So not only is she outlawing it, but also providing protections. Um, she's also, um, she is amending the Public Health Act to protect civil liberties. That's a strong consideration in our a Public Health Act. She also, one thing that sort of went under the radar yesterday, uh, school closures. She's making it a, a right in the education system to in-person education. And so school closures during public health emergencies will be a maximum of three days. And then they have to go back to the minister repeatedly for permission to extend it because the focus will be on keeping kids in school so that Alberta kids are not losing two years of school to combat an illness that doesn't really affect them. And then, of course, um, the halt to gender transitions for minors in this province. So big, big changes yesterday. You know, Sheila, isn't Premier Smith just knocking it out of the ballpark these days? And I got to tell you, the one thing I want to focus in on, because I've had so much experience the last couple of years in the field reporting on this, is the invasion of women's sports by males. And what I've always asked, Sheila, is where are the feminists on this? Um, where Do you remember 10 minutes before COVID, we had the Me Too movement uh, in light of the Harvey Weinstein scandal? Uh, when did the Me Too movement, which was a movement standing up for women, when did it become the screw you movement when it comes to female sports? And it is unbelievable that any real biological woman, and I apply that to any person, whether you're a mother or a father, uh, would go to bat for these transgenders that are literally injuring real women. And, you know, to see the blowback on something that's common sense, as we've discussed over and over, with the exception of auto racing and equestrian, twas ever thus, males and females competed in different divisions. So good for her for standing up. I wish we saw this in Ontario, where we all have all kinds of radical transgenders cheating yeah. and injuring a uh, real woman. But we don't have yeah. that here, unfortunately. Yeah, I love what Premier Smith did in her legislation, because it was it's not enough just to say guys can't compete against girls. It's not enough. Because we know that a lot of sporting organizations have felt like their hands were tied because of Justin Trudeau's human rights legislation. So basically these protections are in place to say, look, enforce the law here in Alberta and we'll make sure you're protected. So uh, that should alleviate some of the excuses coming out of some sporting organizations. Um, and of course, all the right people are angry <laughs> about <Yeah>. this. <laughs> um, and, we'll, and we'll discuss that in a second. And it is the same old people. It's the same old people who are challenging parents' rights legislation in Saskatchewan um, and the same ministers from Alberta who are going to get their asses handed to them in the next election, Randy Boissonneau. So uh, let's actually... This, oh, and Sheila, uh, can I ask sorry. you a hypothetical question based on uh, Smith's announcement when it comes to female sports? What, Which is basically, um, if you're a chick and think of something that rhymes with chick, if you have one of those, you ain't playing on the female team. But what if it's a visiting team from another jurisdiction? For example, as we chronicled last year, um, the Seneca Sting uh, female volleyball team, three of the six starters were men. This year, Sheila, breaking news, four of the six starters 
our men. Right. So if they went to Edmonton or Calgary for an exhibition game uh, with the University of Alberta team, would they be allowed to field those dudes? Or, I mean, I think it's a fascinating question that, you know, we should seek an answer for. I would imagine that the jurisdiction in which the game is taking place takes precedent. I mean, it would just be like, you come to, you come here, you abide by our laws. I think that's, I, I think that would probably be the way that's handled. Um, I'm sure there will be some outcry again from all the right people. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm drinking their tears. I'm hydrated by their tears today. Um, let's, <laughs> let's go into this uh, clip from Daniel Smith making the announcement um, that uh, she is as she says, safeguarding children's future choices, which is true. Because if you start medically transitioning minors, you've eliminated every single future choice to reverse that. We know that puberty blockers are not reversible. We know that this has catastrophic impacts on reproductive issues yep. going forward. We also know it has um, physiological issues and puts you at greater risk for like uh, all those things that, come upon you post menopause is coming upon 20 year olds who were transitioned um, as children. Anyway, let's listen to Premier Smith explain her reasoning here. Today, our government is introducing three pieces of legislation that will set up guardrails to protect the health and safety of Alberta youth. First, we're proposing changes that would protect the future choices of minors who identify as transgender or who are experiencing gender dysphoria. We're also tabling the Education Amendment Act, which proposes changes to the way gender identity, sexual orientation, and human sexuality are discussed and taught in Alberta schools. The final bill I'll talk about is the Fairness and Safety in Sports Act. It aims to ensure everyone can fairly and safely participate in the sports they love. Sport is an important part of many people's lives. These amendments are about being fair and supporting children and youth now in the event that they later choose to make life-altering and potentially permanent decisions. As I've done every time I've spoken about these policies, I want to speak to the youth who are most affected. I and my entire government are here to support you and uplift you and your families. You are loved and we are absolutely committed to ensuring that you receive the support you and your family may need. Oh, that's just so fantastic. You... you know, what a stark contrast, mm -hmm. uh, Sheila, between Premier Smith speaking out against trans insanity, whereas south of the border, the woman who wants to become president, Kamala Harris, supports sex reassignment surgery for illegal aliens yeah. and prisoners. And Sheila, I ask you this, and I ask our audience this, has it, have you ever come across someone you know, fretting and hewing, you know, saying, oh, I hope that illegal alien serial killer in San Quentin, I hope he gets free taxpayer-funded sex reassignment. It's such a, a violation of his human rights. How does that resemble reality and what's just? Well... I mean, I don't know if you noticed, but the people in the background, a couple of them at least, are visibly trans, standing behind Daniel Smith, saying this is a decision that should be made by adults. Did you see our friend um, April Hutchinson was in the audience to hear that being announced at the press conference yesterday, along with Linda Blade, coach Linda Blade, um, author of Unsporting. These are two women who have been fighting for our daughters to be able to have their opportunities protected. It is only the crazy people out there that think that you should be giving cross-sex hormones to 11 year olds. Yeah. It is crazy people who think that this stuff should be hidden from parents. And the more I dig on this and the more that I am exposed to the teaching materials that have been given to Canadian schools, I mean, we should be horrified. A lot of this has been happening under the noses of parents and when parents want the information, it's being withheld. So even good parents are being shut out of the conversation. And, and, and that Sheila, ends now. Why, and why is it only on this file, the idea of parental consent for a minor to engage right. in an activity? Oh, no, no, no. We can't do that. We can't infringe upon that minor. Now, Sheila, I know you're a tattoo aficionado. If a minor yeah. goes to a tattoo shop, don't they need the parental consent to get any ink? Oh, I know that for sure, because my daughter wanted a tattoo 
She was 17 at the time. And I thought, you know what? She is an absolute excellent child. Like, I take no credit for how great she is, but, you know, honors, university scholarships, athlete, works a job. And I thought, you know what? This is the one thing that she's asking me to bend a rule when she is an obsessive rule follower. I'll do it. I had to be present with her. I had to sign a content, consent form. And it was a it was an ordeal to make sure that she was making a decision that, uh, that, you know, that we both wanted. And the thing is a tattoo, it is painful, but you can cover it up and you can remove it. You cannot remove the damage done by cross sex hormones and surgeries. That's exactly my point. Uh, You can cover it up. You can get tattoo removal, which I understand is even more painful than getting the tattoo. It Uh, is. I'm I'm still a blank (laughs) canvas. So I'm just going by uh, what I read. But uh, as you said, you go through the puberty blockers, the sex reassignment. You are rendered sterile. Uh, You and that is okay. That irreversible, uh, you know, decision. And all I can think of, Sheila, especially um, with our friends in the U.S., uh, more privatized medical care than we have here. This is being driven by the almighty dollar. This is a potential new windfall of billions and billions of dollars if they can just get um, kids through the sex reassignment mill. Yeah, they'll medicalize you for life. Yeah. Because now you're on uh, drugs for the rest of your life to uh, mitigate the damage done by cross-sex hormones, uh, even as an adult. You're you're just medicalized from the initial uh, gender-affirming care to the end of your life. It is a, an absolute process where you will never get off big the big pharma merry go round. So the most serious, I mean, forget about tattoos, Sheila. I mean, when my kids were in elementary school, when it came to a field trip, it was typically like yeah. eight pages of stuff you had to read through, sign, even... initial, you know, and basically it boiled down to this. We're having a field trip to the uh, Toronto Zoo. If your kid falls in the lion's, uh, you know, display and uh, gets eaten alive, we're not liable. That's what it basically said, but you had to sign this, right? Right. I mean, every year I have to go through the yearly consent forms. And one of them is, can we take a picture of your kid? <laughs> The other one is, can your kid use technology at school? Why? Because even that stuff has an inherent risk. And yet these same teachers, not all of them, same teachers and their unions and their associated uh, governing uh, government parties in the liberals and the NDP here in Alberta, they think it's perfectly fine for teachers to transition your child at school, to socially transition them. Meanwhile, I'm like, yeah, um, maybe you can take a picture of my kid. Like, it's Unbelievable, bizarre. Sheila. And as you alluded to, the usual suspects are oh. the biggest critics. I think you're going to read a tweet or an X, however it's called, from uh, Randy Boissano, once again being on the wrong side of history, but take it away, Sheila. <laughs> Which Randy even tweeted this? <laughs> yeah, which Randy? Randy Boissano. He's, uh, for those of you keeping track at home, he doesn't know which Randy he is. He <laughs> uh, is the guy who owns 50% of a company with a man who looks like end stage humanity. If we don't fix our diet and start doing some physical exercise, uh, Steven Anderson, they owned a PPE company during the pandemic, which got government contracts while mm-hmm. Randy Boissano is in government voting on lockdowns isn't that weird <laughs> and then now and then his excuse was i don't know which randy is a auto correct text <laughs> message i wasn't running the company and they have text messages to randy he's like oh it's autocorrect and maybe it's another randy so i don't know which randy <laughs> tweeted this um and now as moreover to david's earlier point about the liberals failing upward guess who's the minister in charge of jasper rebuild unbelievable anyway randy Boisno. He's going to get his his liberal ass handed to him in the next election because the only reason he has a seat is because of a vote split between the PPC and the Conservatives in his riding. And this is what he tweets. Today, the premier tabled horrendous legislation and said that she knows better than doctors. No, she's saying, I don't know better than parents. Parents know better. She understands kids better than their own loving parents. She's actually saying, no, teachers don't know better than the parents. 
and what she, and she knows better than the overwhelming majority of Albertans that support equality and dignity. Campaign at the door on this big guy. Go knock some doors in Edmonton Center and ask them, should parents know if kids are being socially transitioned at schools? Should men play rugby against girls? Should kids be given cross-sex hormones at age 11? Randy, I dare you to knock the doors on that issue. I cannot wait to see you get the old get off my lawn treatment like that NDP candidate did in Saskatchewan. And by the way, speaking of misinformation, disinformation, uh, that's a bunch of bunk about the increased suicide risk rates for queer kids unless you give them gender reassignment. And by the way, Sheila, it's so small on my monitor. The suicide, I can't... By the way, the suicide rate doesn't go down post-gender yeah. affirming care. That's right. That's the point. They think it's what... a utopia and they exactly. find out their lives haven't turned around. It's not a happy ever after ending. And they're miserable. And some transition back. The mainstream media never talks about those stories, yeah. right? Never. And others, as you said, unfortunately commit suicide. But what is that little blob uh, next to his um, X verification mark? It's, it, it, is that, does he, is that? Is it, is, if it's a, like a weird egg-shaped blob, oh, it's no, the. Is that the, the pride flag? I thought Pride season was over. It's November, for goodness sake. It's always Pride. How come there's not a poppy there, for example? Huh? Oh, you know what? Let's lobby Elon Musk for a poppy. Yeah. Um, Anyways, it's... And Randy Boisno, uh, he loves to meddle in jurisdictions outside of his own. For example, he tried to get the Pride sidewalk in Westlock even though he's from Edmonton, Westlock is a farming community north of the city. And he was like, yep, we're going to make sure that they get to keep their pride sidewalk. And they yanked it out and passed a bylaw saying no, uh, despite all of his best efforts. And here's the thing with the liberals. The liberals know that this stuff is provincial jurisdiction, health, education, sport. It's all provincial jurisdiction. He can run his yap all he wants, but he really has no authority. So what the liberals do and what they are currently doing in Saskatchewan is they fund proxy groups to fight with the provinces. EGAL, uh, they started getting federal funding in 2017 from the liberals. Uh, They're a radical LGBTQ plus organization. Uh, They got $10.3 million over five years. But then the provinces started cracking down on this stuff. Uh, in Saskatchewan, they have their parents' bill of rights in Alberta. Now this, guess what? EGAL in 2024, 2024 is not even over yet. They're approaching $4 million. Jeez. Uh, so they are using that money in active litigation against Saskatchewan. And EGAL promised yesterday, we're coming for you too, Alberta. So Danielle Smith is smart, and I believe she is. She better shroud this legislation uh, from legal challenges with the use of the notwithstanding clause. Otherwise, we're going to be in litigation with these weirdos for years. Yeah. The shrouding of it in Saskatchewan has not stopped the litigation. Here's what they're doing. They're doing an end run around it. So uh, the notwithstanding clause means that you can't constitutionally challenge the law. It remains operational despite the Constitution. So the activist groups are saying okay fine we don't want the we want we're taking you to court the only remedy we want we know it can't be overturned we want an acknowledgement that the law is unconstitutional yet operational so it doesn't affect the use of the law but what it does is it protects the teachers who have no intent of following the law from professional consequences so you, you, parents, you still have to be on high alert, is all I'm saying. Oh, hi, it's Ezra Levant here in Toronto with an important message because we need your help. Independent journalism in Canada is under attack. Government censors, big tech deplatformers, and the dying legacy media are all working together to maintain exclusive control on the information you receive. They don't want you to hear other voices like ours, and they really don't want you to be informed and to think for yourself. That's why the work we do here at Rebel News is so important. Our on-the-ground reporting, independent news shows, and special content you won't find anywhere else. It's all designed to give you trustworthy information and alternative viewpoints so you can decide for yourself. 
We don't get government money. And we are not owned by some big global conglomerate. We're funded by people just like you. So please support independent journalism and help us continue our work by subscribing and becoming a Rebel News Plus member today, right here on the page. Go to rebelnewsplus.com. Members get instant access to all of our shows, invitations to exclusive events, and access to our premium content like live event footage and documentaries you won't see anywhere else. Only Rebel News Plus members can join the conversation by participating in the comments section of our new website. That way you can have your say too. More than anything though, you'll be able to take pride in supporting real, honest, journalism and you'll help our talented team continue to do the work to push back on the establishment we really can use your help we need it in fact so thank you and enjoy rebel news plus